morning, everybody. So we are finished with the antithesis, six of them in the Sermon on the Mount. And now we come to the true expression of piety. And of course, if you remember, this is the passage that is read on Ash Wednesday. And so as we begin that holy season, uh, Jesus invites us to become the kind of disciples uh, that he's inviting us to become. And of course, it's right there in the Sermon on the Mount, which is what I said, the disciples' creed, right? So here's something that disciples need to pay great attention to. Also, we're done with chapter five of, Math of Matthew, and we are entering chapter six. This is also the chapter that has the only prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, the Our Father, which we will focus on tomorrow, and I'll focus on prayer a little bit uh, tomorrow in my reflection. Now, the very first verse in chapter six begins with these two words, take care. Now, if someone says that to you, what does that indicate? A couple of things. First of all, danger is near. Take care. It also shows concern because you don't say take care to somebody who you don't care about. So what is the danger? The danger is that the disciples may perform acts meant for God and perform it for fringe benefits and forget the real, real benefit. And that's the danger. There's another danger that religious acts or acts of piety may become performance or theater instead of worship. True religious performance of rituals is done not necessarily in the absence of people, but in the presence of God. In other words, Jesus is not saying that people can never see us praying. What Jesus is saying is, make sure that when you're praying, you're doing it for God. Hmm? Now, the other reason why Jesus points towards these three acts, almsgiving, prayer, and fasting, is because it has got to do with righteousness. Remember I said the key principle to interpreting all of the Sermon on the Mount is unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees. So when we perform these acts, righteousness needs to be fulfilled. In other words, when we perform these actions, whether they are rituals or our private actions, they need to be performed with the consideration of righteousness. So according to Jesus, when you perform these acts, almsgiving, prayer, fasting, he's asking us to make sure that they fulfill their purpose. Like you came here for mass today, right? And I'm celebrating this mass, right? You and I need to celebrate this mass in a way that it fulfills its purpose. If we don't, then we are missing the point. And Jesus also says to us, take care, because the danger is that we may actually lose the reward that is behind these acts if we don't perform them rightly. So the consequence is, is, is that we may lose the reward. So Jesus is saying that a disciple's righteousness must be sought in three areas. First, almsgiving. Second, prayer. Third, right, uh, fasting. Now, let's talk about almsgiving first. You see, a disciple's life must center around God. In our case, Jesus, because Jesus is the master, we are the disciples. Now this is true with almsgiving as well. What is, what is being criticized by Jesus when he says, don't be like the hypocrites, what is criticized being Jesus is the wrong order in which almsgiving is performed 
by us or almsgiving is done by us. You see, no matter what we do, our first focus needs to be on giving glory to God. Remember Jesus said to us earlier in the Summer on the Mount, you're the light of the world, you're the salt of the earth, right? You must perform good deeds so that people may see your good deeds and give glory to your Father. What is happening over here? The hypocrite performs these actions not to give glory to God. The order of the act is being lost here. Rather, they are performing the act to give glory to themselves. No, that's kind of idolatry. We have to give glory to God first. Now, the whole concept of first fruits in the Old Testament, remember, God said that when they cultivate their land or when they rear animals, the first fruit needs to go to God. Why? Because that's the order of performance. When we don't give the first fruits, the best to God, then we are reversing the order in which human love is supposed to be expressed. Love for God, love for the other, love for self. That order needs to be, to be correct. And when we do it for our own benefit, then we are reversing the order. We don't give glory to God. So really, performing acts of piety for any other reason than to give glory to God or to benefit us is kind of called pseudo-piety. It's piety, but it's not real piety. It's pseudo-piety. And it's for self-gratification. Oh, I gave something. I feel so good. That's wonderful. Uh, I'm a good guy, right? Pseudo-piety. Self-gratification. Rather, it needs to give glory to God. It also becomes a deal. It becomes a quid pro quo. How many times? And I'll tell you, I'll, I'll confess this. When I do a good deed, at the back of my head, there's always this sense, now God, please don't forget what I've done. Like when I get to heaven, please remember this, because really I'm a good guy. I may have done some very bad things, but please remember this. In other words, sometimes I do good acts because I want to be recognized by God. I want God not to forget me. Or sometimes we do good acts because we want to go to heaven. So now, did I give alms because I care for the other person or am I caring for myself? Am I doing good acts because I want to get to heaven or because I want to help the other person? Do I want to give glory to God? So God is under no obligation to reward us if our purpose of giving alms is not to help, is not to help the other person or to give glory to God because we have already received our reward. What did I want? Self-gratification. Well, you already got it. God doesn't need to reward you anymore because your purpose was not to, to give, help the other person or to give glory to God anyway. It was for your own need and that need is met. Self-gratification. It's actually a kind of atheism. It really is a kind of non-belief in God when we perform acts for our own self-gratification. I think when we give alms for our own benefit, I think we forget that what we have is actually God's gift, isn't it? It's God's gift in the first place. So I take what God has given me and I give it to others, not to help the person or to give glory to God, but for my own benefit. It's a very selfish act. So if the act remains secret, that's the question, do everything in secret. So if the act remains secret, how is God glorified? You may say, but I'm, if I don't tell every, everybody, people won't know that I'm glorifying God. Well, the point is, God doesn't need our glory. God is self-sufficient. It actually benefits us because we become selfless people. 
the reward is truly ours. So there is a paradox over here in all of this. In a disciple's life, no reward is the real reward. You do what God expects you to do as a disciple. Leave the reward to God. No reward in this life is the real reward for a disciple. Okay, let's come to prayer. And I'll talk about prayer more later. Um, Jesus talks about what is the right way to pray. Every Jew is obligated to pray. Now, Jesus says to us in today's gospel, when you pray, go to your inner room and pray. Many people use this as an excuse to get out of mass on Sunday or public worship. Jesus said, pray privately. Well, that's not what Jesus is saying. Because community prayer and, 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 and public worship is part of the Jewish faith and of our faith. Jesus himself went to the synagogue. His parents taught him to go to Jerusalem for the Passover temple celebrations. So Jesus is not saying that all prayer must only be private worship. What Jesus is saying is, prayer is not an activity whereby a disciple must conduct oneself to attract attention. Those who perform prayer do it not because they love God, because they love themselves. It leaves God out of the picture. What is prayer about? Prayer is about our relationship with God. But then if I do it for my sake, then what's happening? I'm leaving God out. It's not prayer anymore. Again, it's kind of atheism. It's kind of idolatry. It's kind of self-worship. Prayer, on the other hand, is supposed to be the most intimate expression of love for God. And that's what Jesus means by go to, your, go to your inner room. Not go to an inner room. Go to your inner room. Prayer needs to happen here, not out there, to show people. If it is performed, then when we, what we do is take and most, the most intimate expression of our love for God and make it into theater. It's what Jesus would call hypocrisy. So that's about prayer. We'll talk more about prayer tomorrow when we say we pray the Our Father. And thirdly, fasting. Ritual fasting was considered part of the Jewish worship or Jewish spirituality. Now, Jesus does not provide us a particular way to fast. He doesn't give us a routine to fast. He doesn't say, you know, on Ash Wednesday fast or he doesn't say on this particular day or that particular day. What Jesus is talking about simply fasting. Jesus is saying, take care that your fasting does not lend to false displays of piety. Fasting loses its significance and integrity as a spiritual exercise if it is done to gain attention. The only way to safeguard our integrity in our almsgiving and our fasting and our prayer is to do it with righteousness. Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Righteousness is right relationship with God, with others, and self. We become unrighteous when we take the order in which we must order our hearts. God, others, self, and we reverse it to self first, and maybe God is second or third, and that is when we violate the demands of righteousness. Folks, it's good to be pious people, but there's a difference between false piety and true piety. True piety comes from within and it gives glory to God. False piety originates because of outward, outward appearance and it gives glory to the self. May we be people whose righteousness exceeds that of the hypocrites and the Pharisees. Amen.